Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The situation seems to be changing by the second. The stock market here in the U.S. now back open after trading was halted on Wall Street earlier this morning due a stark stock market free fall. The S&P falling 7% right after the opening bell. We're going to keep an eye on it throughout this newscast. And the NBA suspending games indefinitely after a player with the Utah Jazz tested positive for COVID-19. We're going to hear from R.J. Marquez and David Sears about what this means coming up in just a few minutes. Lots going on. Good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is March 12th, so we're going to shift gears and go right into some, some lighter news. Yeah, let's try to get your mind off of right. coronavirus for a minute. We will address, of course, what's necessary in a minute. But and we're talking to you Lady Gaga fans out there. A new bug species has been discovered, and it's named after Lady Gaga. It is. The creature's named, and I don't know the scientific name for sure how to pronounce it, but I'm going to say Kakaya Gaga is a new species of tree hopper. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, it's being... Oh, a tree uh, hopper. <laughs> you're being... It's being uh, compared to, be to the pop hopper. star's fame, sense of style with their wacky appearance. Not hers, but the, the bugs. The bugs. Yes. Well, no... The, she uh, she dresses so crazy. That's why. Right. Same kind of thing. If there's going to be a Lady Gaga bug, it's going to be a tree hopper because they've got crazy horns and they have wacky fashion sense about them. That's what uh, Brendan Morris, a grad student at University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, who named the insect, said they're unlike anything we have ever seen before. All right there's the critter right there. Okay, so he studies entomology. Name the species after the pop diva in an attempt to highlight tree hoppers. He said they're morphological wonders with bizarre uh, protuberances, protuberances uh -huh. that can resemble anything from horns to dead plant leaves. And to communicate, they sing to one another by vibrating plant stems. My question is, and this is just, I'm curious, mm -hmm. if Gaga knows and what her reaction is to being named, you know, I bet the she would find that to be an honor. I think she would too. Don't you? Yeah. All right, let's take a look at your rundown. Hey there, good morning. It is Thursday. It is March 12th. The ongoing coronavirus concerns. We're still waiting for the next group of Grand Prince's cruise ship passengers to arrive at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland for quarantine. Actor Tom Hanks says he and his wife are now infected with the virus. They're in Australia for a movie shoot and say they felt tired and had body aches. More schools across the country are closing. Seattle schools are closed for at least two weeks. Some are closing dorms as well. U.S. service members and their families are also being impacted from the outbreak. Starting tomorrow, they will be under new travel restrictions. The Department of Defense says traveling is restricted for level three countries designated by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. This includes permanent change of station, temporary duty, and government-funded leave. In other news this morning, Harvey Weinstein has been rushed to the hospital with chest pains after being sentenced to 20 three years in prison for sexual assault and rape. Both prosecutors and defense attorneys are in the process of reviewing questionnaires completed by 200 potential jurors in the capital murder case of Otis McCain. McCain is accused of shooting veteran SAPD detective Ben Marconi to death as Marconi sat in his patrol car. A woman is in serious condition this morning after she was hit by a car while crossing the street in the 300 block of San Pedro, just north of downtown. According to police, the driver pulled over did help the woman. She was taken to the hospital and is in critical condition. U.S. authorities have arrested more than 600 people in a crackdown on one of Mexico's most powerful drug cartels. Disneyland is set to open its new Avengers campus July 18th. Guests at the California Adventure Park will have a chance to train with all their favorite superheroes. Researchers came across the fossil of the smallest dinosaur ever, reportedly in the country of Myanmar. For size reference, it's smaller than the size of the tiniest hummingbird alive today. Okay, you know, all the coronavirus talk and there's worry about you going to your doctor's office and getting tested because if you do have it, exposing other people. My cousin, Susanna Boyd, who lives in Atlanta, Georgia, just posted this. and I thought Home was, to CDC. Yeah, mm -hmm. and she just posted this and I thought this was fascinating. She said, my doc sent an email to all patients that if you're sick, your car is your waiting room, you call to check in and when it's your turn, they will escort you directly to the doctor so you're not waiting with non-sick people. She said, why don't they do this all the time? I'd much rather be in my car waiting, listening to my music and stuff than stuck at chairs in a doctor's office. Right. That's a very interesting take. Some of these precautions may have seemed peculiar maybe 24 hours ago. Not so right. much today. Stay in your car. We'll call you when it's your turn and we'll come get you. Right. 
Right. Interesting. <laughs> Story continues to evolve. Much more coming up, including a little bit later on with the uh, Texas Tribune. Got all the angles covered here in Texas on coronavirus. Absolutely. Speaking of having you covered, weather-wise, we have super meteorologist Katie Blake in the house. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, cloudy start to the day this morning, as you just saw out on live cam. We've had those low clouds uh, begin to fill in right around dawn this morning. They'll be around for a few more hours out there, but I do expect we'll get to see some sunshine this afternoon, and that'll help to warm us up into the low 80s. I want to show you the very latest pollen count. We are getting into uh, the heart of oak season right now, and oak is high once again today with a count of 720. Everything else is moderate. Mold, hackberry, and mulberry also a little bit elevated as compared to the past couple of days, but oak is still our problem allergen today, so that may make you feel a little bit stuffy as we get here into the heart of oak season. 67 outside right now with the dew point in the low 60s. It is really humid out there. No fog here in town, but there is some patchy fog out there. We'll take a look at visibility coming up in just a few minutes and let you know what the weekend is looking like in your full forecast. That'll be along in just a bit. Guys, back over to you. Thank you very much. Right now we're looking at 1604 Kyle Seal Parkway and we've got an accident out there. It appears to be in the clearing stages out there and it, it does appear to be affecting at least one lane of traffic. I can't tell the direction, but it looks like it could be in the eastbound lanes of 1604 out there on the northwest side at Kyle Seal. All right, we need to take you to breaking news right now on the city's south side. San Antonio police are investigating a deadly stabbing. This happened this morning around 7 in the 300 block of Gillette. Well, police say they found a 42-year-old woman and a 23-year-old woman both dead at the scene. Officers believe the 19-year-old suspect is related to those victims. We're told he suffers from some sort of mental issues. We are still working on getting more information on this developing story. Look for more right here on KSAT and KSAT.com. All right, top stories that we're following for you today. We are still waiting to learn the name of a teenage boy killed last night during a shooting in far west Bear County. It happened around 9 last night in the 11,500 block of Sangria Street. That's not far from Lone Star and Alamo Ranch Parkway. Right now, Bear County Sheriff's deputies don't know exactly what led up to the shooting. They did detain a suspect at the scene, though. His name has not yet been released. Well, growing concerns over the coronavirus across the country have led to a number of cancellations and some pretty major changes. Uh, that's right. Uh, several coronavirus related stories have come out in the last 24 hours, including just into our newsroom. The UIL Boys State Basketball Tournament will go on as planned, but only with a limited number of fans in attendance. The tournament taking place today through Saturday at the Alamo Dome here in San Antonio. People have already bought tickets will be able to go, but no additional tickets will be sold. You can find more information on KSAT.com. Well, other coronavirus headlines this morning. President Donald Trump suspended travel from Europe for 30 days beginning on Friday. The Houston rodeo shut down 11 days early, and several local universities have expanded spring break at least one more week. Plus, the NBA announced it is suspending games indefinitely. Indefinitely, and, and that brings in R.J. Marquez now, and he's here in the studio. David Sears joining us live as well to talk more about this huge decision from the NBA that affects uh, just about all of us uh, Spurs fans. Right, I don't yeah. even know where to yeah. start. I don't either. Yeah, so we'll get to you in just a second, David, but R.J., yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I think the uh, the important thing to know is that we were kind of trending to this point already. It seemed like the NBA was going to make this decision to play games in empty arenas uh, for the time being. But the tipping point was always going to be if a player tested positive, which is what happened last night. And within, I would say, 15 minutes, the NBA sent out a release saying that all games were suspended indefinitely. Now, that does not mean that the season has been completely canceled, but they are going to take a break here. Teams are still going to be able to practice. Teams are still going to be able to report to the facilities. But uh, right now, they are taking full precautions to avoid the spread of uh, COVID-19. All right, we've got more on this, and David Sears is standing by more. David, you covered the uh, professional leagues now for decades. This isn't a strike. This isn't a <laughs> lockout. What is your take on this unusual no. turn of events? Very unusual. Like RJ, I was expecting today that there would be the announcement they were no longer going to let fans inside the arenas across the NBA. Golden State had already made that decision because of the rules there in California. They didn't want anybody assembling over a thousand people. So Golden State Warriors had already made the decision they weren't going to allow any fans inside their arena for the rest of the season, probably. So I was expecting that today. I wasn't expecting them to just put a hiatus on the season. But after Rudy Gobert tested positive, then that happened. 
happen. I think there's going to be a lot of questions asked over the next couple of days and not necessarily to put any blame on anybody or anything, but just to find out how he got this. Mm -hmm. He tested mm -hmm. negative yesterday for the flu, but then they decided they would go ahead and test him for the coronavirus, and that test comes back positive. He was going to play last night. Mm -hmm. He was ready to suit up and play. He never made it to the arena, but he was going to play until that test came back positive. So I think they need to go back and retrace the steps of Rudy Gobert and, and some of his teammates well, and, and kind of find out the, just here. so we'll know, not necessarily to put blame, so we will know how he got it. Well, here's the thing, RJ. Mm -hmm. I, um, I mean, they, they're such close proximity, right. and there's a lot of contact right. between these right. players. Yeah. So isn't it also true that they said anyone who's played against them for the last 11 games, they're to self-quarantine? Well, for the days? past 10 days. Past for the 10 past days. 10 days. Now, here's the thing that they've identified, obviously, the five teams that played against Utah over it the was past not the Spurs. 10 days. It was not the Spurs, but Utah did play Cleveland, and, of course, the Spurs did play Cleveland oh, on Sunday night. That. So this is kind of a, a There's little bit of a domino, domino effect of this. Now, I mean, this is the ultimate six degrees of separation here oh, well because put. all yeah. these teams play one another and they are all interacting with one another. So, um, yes, those five teams that Utah did play over this that 10 day period, the past 10 days, they've been told to self quarantine. Of course, the Spurs did play Cleveland, so we'll know a and, little bit more about that. And, and to be honest, this isn't hype. We're just connecting some some possible yeah, dots here. That's what it is. Right. Yeah. Oh. So David. And, and and I think that's a good question is how deep does this go? How how wide can this spread? And it also sends a message to everybody in this country and even around the world. Anybody can get inflicted with the coronavirus. Right. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time next to the wrong person, you could end up with that coronavirus. I mean, here is a finely, highly tuned yeah. athlete, right. and he gets the coronavirus. Right. So it can happen to anybody. So hey. do what the CDC tells you and follow their rules. Uh, we're out of time, guys. We're real quick. i got to ask the question. To our knowledge thus far, do we know whether anybody on the Spurs staff or personnel or players have, have – had any issues or been tested for anything yet? Do we know? Nothing we official. Uh, nothing official. Marco okay. Bellinelli had been battling an illness, but he played the other day. Okay. So I'm assuming that he was uh, yeah. that he was cleared so. to play, but there's been nothing official. And I will say on the Spurs part, they did a great job the other night of uh, setting everything up kind of on the fly, having a lot of hand sanitizers ready for the, the media, distance. the players. So, yeah, they did a great job with that. And... Uh, you know, we'll see. This will take a little bit of time. I do feel bad for the all the workers at the AT&T Center that this is now exactly. affected and all that. And there was a it's second a Utah effect. Jazz player who's being tested and we're waiting to Emmanuel find out. Emmanuel Moutier was the other player that was reportedly being tested as well. So we will find out about that. And, of course, the Jazz players, too. I mean, you the bet. entire they roster. They all have to. All right. yeah. Guys, thank you, David. Uh, thank you for your insight, sir. And uh, we'll, obviously more to come on this in the coming hours and uh, days. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we'll see you in a few minutes. We're here at Legoland. So <laughs> we'll right. be back yeah. in just a few minutes. All right, that's, that's a deal. Yeah. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Look, by the way, you got a second? Yeah, sure. Real you quick. got a second? You got a second? Here may be the last fans and basketball players oh. you see. Oh, for a while. yeah, that's, that's, on the court. Oh, that's theoretically so. possible. All right, that's David, the replica of the arena here at Legoland. All right, yeah. thank you, guys. Right now we're at 910. We are at 67 degrees. Since the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak, South Korea has tested hundreds of thousands of people. We're going to take a look inside the facility where researchers developed a test kit for the disease in under three weeks. What's the availability of testing for the virus here in the Lone Star State as of today? We get an update from the Texas Tribune later in this newscast. And the stock market, wow, not good. Down 1,800 points at 21,681. They've already had to stop trading once today. Welcome back. Just about 9.15. There's still a few days left of spring break. And if you're looking for something to distract your kiddos while also keeping their brains engaged, Legoland may be the place to go. David Sears is live checking out some of the fun activities, including a new virtual reality experience, taking kids inside a Lego race. That sounds like a fun place to be, I know. David. He's like a kid in a candy store, yeah. isn't he? I'm going to tell you, this is like a kid's dream right here, even if you're a you know, somewhat older kid. I'm not going to tell you how old, but older kids. Just look at this space in here. This is just part of Legoland. Look at all the Legos. There are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces of Legos blocks that have built just about everything in this room. There are car races over there. They can kind of emulate little earthquakes over there with Legos. And look at this pile of Legos in here. I mean, just jump in there and go to town. Look at this. You could just build anything you want. Just jump in and go to town. And you mentioned this brand new ride. They've got several rides here at Legoland. This is the brand new 
new one. This is the virtual reality Lego race ride. You get up in here in this egg-shaped chair, and you put on these goggles right here. I won't put them on now. Dale and I did it earlier, and it takes you through like, it's, it's like a roller coaster ride. It's like a venture ride. It's all kinds of stuff going on in this one ride. It's brand new. It's absolutely fantastic. Chase Hathaway with Legoland. Just kind of describe this ride for me real quick. You know, it's unlike anything you've ever been on. It's, it's, it's a virtual reality experience that takes you off cliffs and through an ocean and uh, through, through AI construction zone. There's stuff flying at you. The technology is so cool. It's 360 degrees. So there's something going on above you, behind you, everywhere. It's a truly action-packed two and a half minutes. Now you guys have had a good week so far. What's the attraction of Legoland? You know, it's so much fun here at Legoland Discovery Center. We uh, describe ourselves as the ultimate indoor Lego playground. And so if you are a, a Lego lover, it's the spot for, for uh, you. We teach classes, we have workshops, we have rides, we have 10 building test zones, a 4D movie theater. There's so much fun here. And you know what, guys? We're talking about coronavirus a lot these days. They have taken care of that for you. Every night, they clean all these pieces. Of course, they do it anyway, but they've really put some extra emphasis on making sure all these pieces are clean, everything that these kids are going to be and the dolls are going to be everywhere. It's all clean. You can see over here, they got a basket of wipes. Every time one person comes in and rides this ride, they've got an official here from Legoland will come in here and, and wipe everything down. So cleanliness is their first priority and then making sure these kids have a great time. That's their second priority and we'll be back in the next half hour with more from Legoland. All right, David, thank you. Looks fun. Super meteorologist Katie Blake is back with us here in the studio talking about your Thursday forecast, looking ahead to a weekend. And we've been chatting off and on all morning, Katie, about how unusually warm yeah. it's been lately, especially yesterday afternoon. You described it as downright. It was hot. Yeah. We were out in the sun. You could get out by the pool. Yeah, mm -hmm. no doubt, no doubt. And I was like, Mike, it's too soon to not have a front coming through. Like, we should still have, mm -hmm. albeit they're not going to be as strong yeah. as, you know, in the winter and late fall, but we should still get some frontal boundaries coming through. I don't have a front in the planning forecast, so I don't think a whole lot is going to change, but rain chances do look better early next week. Okay, so in that. the short That's term, okay. things will be staying plenty warm and plenty humid. I want to show you the time lapse from this morning. This is really cool because you can see some of those low clouds, but then moving overhead, moving in another direction, those high thin cirrus clouds. So we've got a nice nice mixed bag of cloud cover out there this morning. Those low clouds have really filled in and they'll be around for a few more hours through about midday or so. And then I think just like yesterday, they'll start to break up a little bit more and that should allow us to see a little bit of blue sky in the afternoon, but we'll continue to see that mid and high level cloud cover. Those thinner clouds continuing to stream in during the day today. So overall, a good amount of cloud cover for your Thursday, warming back up into the mid 80s, 84 year high temperature this afternoon in San Antonio, just staying warm even into the evening hours by 10 o'clock. We're still in the mid 70s with south winds hanging tough 5 to 15 miles per hour. That will keep humidity on our dew points elevated through the course of the day today. Those higher dew points have led to a little bit of patchy fog, mainly west of San Antonio. Uvalde, uh, you were down to a mile and a half visibility just about 20 minutes ago, so things are improving there. Five miles in Rock Springs, seven miles in Carrizo Springs. Overall, not too bad. We didn't have too much dense fog out there this morning, and it's just unseasonably warm. Low 70s down on the coastal bend, low to mid 60s up in the hill country, and you just feel every little bit of that humidity out there this morning. Look at satellite and radar. We don't have anything showing up radar wise, so no rain out there, but plenty of cloud cover. And as our visible satellite starts to fill in, you can see here, especially off to the southeast, some of those lower clouds that have filled in. But what really catches your eye is the higher cloud cover that continues to stream in from the west. And this cloud cover is going to stay fairly consistent even into the weekend just because of what's going on in the jet stream and the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. A lot of moisture here from the Pacific Ocean is really just being funneled uh, into the uh, southwestern part of the United States. Really, the uh, focus of that is a center of circulation that's off the coast of California. This is an upper level low pressure system that continues to push all of this moisture our direction and over the next couple of days it will continue to do so. So as we get into this afternoon, uh, breaking up those lower clouds just a little bit, but still plenty of that high cloud cover around. And as we get into your Friday, also looking at a mainly rain free day, but still plenty of clouds tomorrow as this upper level low gets a little bit closer. Now, as we get into Friday night and then Saturday, the good rain making energy with this upper level low is going to miss us off to the north. That means better chances of some shower and thunderstorm activity 
activity uh, generally north of the I-10 corridor, closer to the I-20 corridor. As we get into Friday night, though, looking off to the west, a few little isolated showers and storms will be possible, but a lot of the rain activity this weekend is just going to be too far north for us to really cash in on. However, as we get into Saturday, I am going to introduce a 20% chance of an isolated shower or storm, primarily north of San Antonio. There could be a little coastal showers, a few little coastal showers as we get into Saturday, Sunday. Rain chances start to come up just a little bit. Some more isolated showers, non severe thunderstorms will be possible. But take a look at next week. Once we get into Monday uh, through the middle of the week, we're going to have some what we call short waves moving across South Texas, and that should help us out with rain chances a bit. May even have to take those rain chances up a little bit for early next week, and we'll talk about why coming up next half hour. Okay, my yard could use a little rain. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Blake. Right now, it's 921, 67 degrees. So formal. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. While there are a lot of questions about the availability of coronavirus testing kits in the U.S., South Korea seems to have it all figured out how scientists were able to come up with an effective system. Welcome back. It's 924. Well, since the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak, South Korea has been aggressively testing for the disease with the help of drive through testing facilities and a new artificial intelligence research technique. A Korean biotech company gave CNN's Ivan Watson exclusive access to the facilities where their team developed a test kit for the coronavirus. Since the start of the coronavirus outbreak, South Korea has aggressively tested for the disease. With the help of drive through testing facilities that speed up the process, South Korea has already tested more than 220,000 people. The quick rollout made possible thanks to fast work by Korean biotech companies like C-Gene, which gave CNN exclusive access to its research facilities. This is the laboratory where a team of scientists came up with the test kit for diagnosing coronavirus, and they did it in under three weeks. When we started, we did not expect this kind of the pandemic or outbreak happen in Korea. Nobody expected at all. Chen jong yun is the founder and CEO of C-Gene, a company that designs and sells test kits that identify dozens of different kinds of diseases. In mid-January, Chun says he first instructed his researchers to invent a new test for coronavirus, which was then starting its deadly spread across China. So you guys were already working on coronavirus before the first confirmed case of the illness in South Korea. Yeah, just hearing the news from the China, we thought it will be impact on the Korean Peninsula. So we thought that it's an emergency case. The molecular microbiologists got to work without ever having a physical sample of the virus. Instead, they relied on a genetic blueprint of the new virus distributed by the World Health Organization and health officials in China, highlighting three specific genes. C-Gene's scientists then had to come up with a way of spotting those coronavirus genes in future samples taken from patients. Was there more pressure than usual? Yeah, because it's an uh, emergency case uh, rapidly spreading the coronavirus into uh, our countries. Not long ago, it would have taken C-Gene two to three months to come up with a test. But using artificial intelligence... You were able to come up with a test in less than two weeks. Right. That's pretty quick. Yeah, very quick. Chun says on February 12th, the Korean government fast-tracked approval of the new coronavirus test kit less than a month after C-Gene started working on it. These six vials, some of which only contain a teardrop worth of solution, are what you need to conduct tests on 100 patients for coronavirus. And that can be completed in just four hours. C-Gene is now working overtime, even drafting scientists with PhDs to work on the assembly line. That's how much demand there is right now. Yes, yes, crazy demand. Not, not only from domestic market, also you know, from the overseas market. The demand is urgent because identifying coronavirus is one of the best ways to stop the spread of this disease. Ivan Watson, CNN, Seoul. That's fascinating. Fascinating stuff. And I was thinking about that the other day. The people who are working tireless hours, sleeping on couches, are not sleeping at all right now. Not only trying to figure out how to fight this, but how to beat it. Yeah, and they're coming up with vaccines, but of course it has to go through the trials and all of that. And we're going to talk more with Alana Rocha about that coming up. Much more ahead on GMSA at 9. Is your kid a picky eater? 
I'm a picky eater. We have simple ways to get your kiddos excited about some healthy snack options. You're not a kid. I'm a kid at heart. Yeah, you are. School districts around Texas grappling with how to handle the coronavirus. We get the big picture from the Texas Tribune next. Of course, the big topic of discussion, not only in San Antonio and Texas, our country, even around the globe, the coronavirus. That's right. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune joins us this morning for our Tribune Thursday. Good morning, Alana. How are you? Good. Good morning. Let's talk about the coronavirus. Local health officials said Wednesday they did not know how a Houston area man who tested positive for the virus this week became infected, suggesting the first signs of community spread of the virus within Texas. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, how readily will testing be available? Do we know? No, I mean, we know as far as, well, local health officials and, and state health officials can't tell us how many tests are available or how many they should have access to in a given day. Uh, the state can tell us that what they can process as far as the state health labs. The largest one can process only 26 tests a day. That's one of 10 uh, labs that across the network, the governor says, can process about 125 tests a day. So not a lot when you look at our population. And obviously, if this is a, a community transmitted um, case down in the Houston area, people are going to want to know who has it uh, and who doesn't. And local officials are still prioritizing who gets the testing as far as somebody who exhibits symptoms and has had contact with a positive case. So, uh, you know, it's alarming. We have seen an increase in the number of tests that are available to communities. But like I said, again, they're prioritizing those given the, the limited testing um, availability or limited processing uh, at the state level. Well, at least two Texas public school districts have temporarily canceled classes over concerns about exposure to the coronavirus. And mm. across the state, hundreds of other school districts we know are weighing in on when and whether they might follow suit. So what factors are they considering when to decide when and if to close a school? Well, this is a local decision. Uh, the Texas Education Agency at the state level is offering guidance, but it says really, you know, this is up to the individual districts. Uh, two big things they're weighing. One, uh, a lot of kids get their main nutrients and, and meals at school through free and reduced lunch. So, you know, the Texas uh, Department of Agriculture is working with the federal government uh, and districts in getting waivers to see how they can feed these kids if classes aren't in session. The other consideration uh, they're looking looking at is how they can virtually teach them should it come to that. A lot of districts have, you know, access to, to tablets and Chromebooks for every student to send home, but those students don't all have access to broadband internet. So you're seeing creative solutions, some expensive, sending kids home with hotspots or trying to figure out how they can get access or kind of distribute the internet uh, to these uh, students' homes. 19 of the 38 Texas members of Congress are over the age of 60, the age at which medical professionals say people are most at risk for serious complications mm -hmm. from the virus. I guess some decisions are going to need to be made there. What are they weighing, Alana? Yeah, well, they're weighing having to go back and forth from uh, D.C. to Texas every week on a plane. Uh, they're, you know, weighing that and kind of being in D.C. away from home. but not wanting to, to leave and, and kind of be absent as they, you know, this critical time where Congress needs to be addressing, uh, you know, different factors with how much this is going to paralyze society, it seems, with different things being canceled. So uh, you see them featured in our, our uh, story from our D.C. Bureau that they're, you know, sharing Lysol wipes and different things uh, just to be able to kind of stay on top of this and, and hopefully not get it. People have so many questions, and I know that the Tribune is doing an, a virtual online educational event today. Tell us about yes. that. Coronavirus 101, I'm sitting down with Jason McClellan at UT in the McClellan Lab where they did a major breakthrough in creating a 3D model, atomic scale model of, uh, of the virus for other labs to use to develop vaccines. But uh, we'll talk about treatments and everything else, and you can tune in at 1130 Central, texastribune.org. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune. Thank you. As always, Alana, have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Again, texastribune.org, 1130. Hey, just to mention as we go to uh, live cam here in the Katy, Congress, again, we want to mention Congress shutting down the Capitol House and Senate office buildings to the public through April 1st as a precaution.
All right. We, do you need an umbrella as a precaution in the I'm next couple days? To, I'm going to try to distract everybody with Thank a, little you. I appreciate with a little that. bit of uh, weather talk here. I want to give you a look outside. All that separates us from a lot more sunshine and a little bit of blue sky, it's those low clouds that have filled in pretty nicely over the past couple of hours. But there are some peaks of sunshine getting through. Temperatures across Bear County are in the mid to upper 60s with a pretty Persistent south wind in place, keeping things very humid out there this morning. As we uh, head into the afternoon hour, 74 at lunchtime, 84 your high temperature this afternoon. With that cloud cover breaking up just a bit, uh, we're not going to see completely clear skies this afternoon, that's for sure. But a little bit of sun as we get into the second half of the day to help warm you up just a little bit more. I want to give you a look at today's pollen count as well. If you missed it last half hour, uh, Oak is still our problem allergen today. That was a little bit of magic there for you. Oh, because our problem allergen today, um, it is high with a count of 720. Mold is moderate. Hackberry and mulberry are moderate today as well. But just a reminder that we are getting into the peak of oak season now. It typically peaks in late March and early April. That's where we are. We've seen some high readings the past couple of days, and you can expect oak to stay uh, very elevated for several more weeks as we get into April. Sarah Spivey has a great write-up on KSAT.com right now about why oak is such a problem this time of year and why the oak leaves actually fall off this time of year. So go check that out on KSAT.com. I'll be back in just a bit to talk more about rain chances in the coming days. Mark Leslie. Let's check the roadways. Okay, we can do that. Here's 35 at I-37 right now. Things are looking great. Stall vehicle there on the shoulder, 35 at Evans. All right, everybody, it's the perfect place for kids to play while keeping their brains engaged. We're talking about Legoland, of course, has lots of activities for kiddos of all ages, and our expert kiddo, David Sears, is there live with more from Hi, Legoland. David, what you got now? Hey, look at this. Even the fence looks like a Lego. How's that, huh? Pretty cool. We are right next to one of the rides. This is the King Quest ride here inside at Legoland. You ride that ride and you save the queen. She's going to have to wait because we're going to show you something else, though, before we save the queen. We may come back and save the queen later. She's going to have to hang in there. I want you to look at this is mini San Antonio in here. Check this out. Thousands and thousands of Legos built with some of the iconic buildings and scenes here in San Antonio. You see the Alamo right there and the Cenotaph and the next to that is the Marriott River Center Hotel. There's that uh, Freedom Statue from downtown. And check out the uh, tower and look at the top of the tower up there. Dale's gonna pan up and I want you to look. The restaurant goes around, look at that. The restaurant in the tower in Legoland goes around in a circle. Now you guys will love this one. This is the Emily Morgan Hotel. And you remember the Emily Morgan Hotel is haunted guys. So there you go. You push that little button right there, and, and look, there's ghosts in there. Listen. Ooh. Leslie, this is your favorite one. I know you're going to love this one. King William, construction going on. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> the guy in the, the, guy in the <laughs> jackhammer <laughs> fixing the roads just for you, Leslie. The streets <laughs> are open. They've got cars going around the streets. Look at the traffic it's lights so right there. Detailed and yes, and the vehicles on this track. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. House. Vehicles even stop at the stoplights. Look, watch it. Oh, well, he's got a that. green light over there. Oh, yeah. There's yeah, Sunset yeah, but it's Station. It's not accurate because those lights are in sync. Oh, <laughs> well, well you know, they work on them every day here in the in, in Legoland. And there's the uh, there's the cathedral right there. And then on on this side, it's uh, replicas of all the missions here in San Antonio, other than the Alamo. And one more to show you one more. This over here is the Alamo Dome. Oh, it's my full goodness. of fans. And there's two football teams playing on the floor, look at this, there's the Secret Service up there just in case somebody really important shows up. They got those guys ready. And then I like this guy, he's, he's fishing. <laughs> I don't, don't know why, but he's fishing. I don't know what he'll catch. Maybe he'll catch the score later. Okay, look, so you got the players on the field, watch this. Let's see if we can score a touchdown. You gotta stay away from the, oh man, I already got tackled. So we'll, we'll keep going and see if we can score. We're at the, we're at the oh, 50. Oh, look at that. We're at the 40. I see you yeah, little guy running. Yeah, how about running? that, huh, at the 30. Go, oh, go, Look go, at go. that, oh, oh, way. if you he's stop, that means you got oh, no, tackled, so you gotta start again so so there you go well he's backing up because i got tackled so then and touchdown score touchdown game over so that's fun. just 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 is just one 
thing you can hang out and do here in Legoland. So you got all this interactive stuff for the kids. This is a fantastic got- place. Open at 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. And it's just twenty-two dollars unless you order a ticket online. Before that, it's nineteen bucks. But see, and, here's here's the trash truck right there, Dale. Look at he stopped at the red light. And all I'm this, not sure if the blinker works. And but Legoland he at the red is light. in the shops right. at River Center, right, David? Inside River Center Mall, so you don't have to worry about being outside. And everything in here is clean. It's sparkling clean. It's awesome. Great place. I cannot Come on down. believe the detail. See y'all later. Wow, Pretty David, cool that's super stuff. neat. Thank you so much for the tour. I even saw the Tobin Center in there. I mean, they've got everything. everything. David, thank you. Uh, right now, 941, 67 degrees. When you're going on a road trip with the kids, you always want to make sure you have plenty of snacks. If you're hitting the road anytime soon, you want to tune in because you don't want to miss the creative and simple ideas for snacks on the go. It's been a rough day on Wall Street. That would be a bit of an understatement. They've already halted trading once, and right now the Dow is down about 1,800 points at 21,730. Well, if you have a picky eater at home, you know how tough it can be to figure out the perfect snack. This morning we have some simple ways to get your kids excited about some healthier options. This is a really easy hack for snacks on the go that keep your kids entertained. This is just a container from the dollar store and it's full of nuts and raisins and fruits and little crackers. And because there's all these little compartments, it takes a lot of time for them to eat it. It's great to entertain them on an airplane or a road trip and keep them distracted. Do you want some? Yeah. Okay. Here are some other on-the-go snacks that I love. So this is a really easy on-the-go snack that is actually really healthy and nutrient-dense for them. So just get some cheese, some meat, and some nut or seed crackers. These are Marigon crackers. You can get these at HEB. There's a few other brands that are nuts and seed-based. Olives are a great snack because they're high in fat. Do you like olives? No. Oh, yes, you do. Um, a lot of kids don't like them, but if they do, this is a really good on-the-go snack. And then beef sticks, these are from Costco, and these are really small and perfect for kids to get them fat and protein instead of filling them up with sugar. Same with these bars. These actually have vegetables hidden in them. There's tons of good products out there on the market that, can't, that you can take on the go. Just watch the sugar and the artificial dyes. Give it to me. Hanging out at home, why not uh, share? Not sure what to do with your kids today? We've got you covered. We do right now on KSAT.com. Simple things you can do to keep them busy. Just look for all these stories in the KSAT Kids section. And it looks like maybe a couple of days this weekend, you might want to have something indoors to keep them busy. Yeah, especially I think as we get into Sunday and then early next week, mm-hmm. looking like better chances of rain. A lot of the rain this weekend, I think, is going to be up in central and north Texas, so like just out, just out of reach. Some isolated showers and storms will be possible, so not a washout this weekend, but the humidity, that is, that is hanging tough hanging tough with us uh, for the rest of the week and into the weekend. I want to give you another look at your forecast for today. We'll see temperatures this afternoon top out in the mid 80s with this low cloud cover this morning that has filled in breaking up a little bit into the afternoon. So we'll see a little bit of sun for the second half of the day to help push us into the mid 80s. Very warm for this time of year. No chance of rain to, uh, today or tomorrow really as we get into Saturday and Sunday isolated chances of showers and storms, but it's actually early and then into the middle part of next week that we're feeling a bit better about rain chances and as uh, our forecast models continue to progress over the next couple of days. I'm hopeful that we'll actually be able to increase rain chances a little bit more for early next week. We'll keep an eye on it for you, but we do need some rain. Latest drought monitor out today. There's not really any significant change at all from where it was last week, which is good because things didn't get too much worse, but not good because there's a lot of red on this map indicating extreme drought in some of our communities generally south of the Highway 90 corridor. So some rain would be nice. We've got to get our overall weather pattern to cooperate a little bit more. The current state that we're in does not allow for any big dips in the jet stream flow that would bring us chances of rain and some cooler air to move into Texas. Uh, Really what we're looking at as we get into the early and middle part of next week are some things that we call short waves moving into South Texas. These are very subtle. Here's one right here. Very subtle little changes in the upper level wind flow. You'll notice how all of these upper level winds here look very uniform. They don't have any little kinks or bumps 
bumps in them. And then as you get closer to San Antonio, as we get into early next week, a little bit of a change here. That's one of those short waves. They produce some lift that brings in cloud cover and also can bring in chances of showers and non severe thunderstorms. The good thing about these short waves is that they can help generate rain, maybe a couple of thunderstorms, but really no big concern about severe weather with this type of a weather pattern. So as we get into next week, you'll see our rain chances gradually increasing to scattered showers and thunderstorms as we get into Monday, St. Patrick's Day on Tuesday, and then eventually the middle of next week. Like I said, I hope maybe we can bump those rain chances up a little bit early next week. We will keep you in the know, but no big changes in temperatures, no big changes in humidity because we don't have a cool front in the planning forecast here, so it'll be staying warm and muggy. And if it's going to be like this, could we at least get, get some, some rain. nice rain? I yeah. Know. yeah. I wish. Thanks, Katie. You're welcome. 950, 67 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and we'll be right back. Up today at noon, if you are looking for a fun activity for your kids as spring break winds down, why not try a physics lesson? Katie Blake shows us about laminar. Is that what it is? Laminar Lam flow? Laminar. Laminar. Laminar flow. Whatever. And this is why I need to watch it. The ladies, Blake's <laughs> Brady Axe. That's coming up today on the news at noon. And coming up tomorrow on GMSA at 9, it's a chance for moms to get all dolled up and ready to party. And it's all for a good cause. Mom Prom is a fundraising effort benefiting foster children that has become increasingly popular across the country. Now it's coming to San Antonio. We have details about when it's happening and how you can take part tomorrow. At nine. A shocking sell off yeah. continues on Wall Street this morning. Right now, the Dow is down 1,600 points or so. It's been hovering down around 18 to 1,900 points all morning long. They halted trading at one point. Uh, many of the jitters today are not only about the coronavirus, but the uh, president's travel ban on uh, flights coming in from Europe. From Europe. Starting uh, tomorrow. 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 Friday. All righty. That's not me. Oh, Transguide, no, sorry. Guide. Yeah. I can do Transguide. I've never done Transguide before. Go for it. Go, we'll go, go for it. It's uh, all you. Smooth sailing here at I-35 at Evans. Oh, we like right. the voice. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, she's, got, she's got a separate Transguide voice. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Katie Blake. She can also <laughs> commentate golf. There, oh, this this doesn't look great, though. I-35. No, nope, looks like there's an accident over there. I think our officers are safe. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> they are much better they're, at that than we. They're like, you do weather, <laughs> we'll do traffic. Yeah, everyone yeah. stay in your lane, please. All right, here is your planning forecast. This is a very spring-like forecast, but more like late spring. We're going to stay very warm and very humid over the next week with rain chances beginning to pick up late this weekend into the early part of next week with some scattered showers and storms possible. We will keep you in the know. How right. fun does this sound? It, it, and if you're out of spring break ideas, we've got one more for you. A giant 7,600 square foot indoor playground. Perfect for a rainy hot weather in it's, San Antonio. It's called Hang Indoor Playground. There's free, it's for the adults too. This article on KSAT.com, it, Al and Raquel Gamillo created it as a safe and health conscious place for their boys, but wanted a space that is super parent friendly as well. All right, there's free Wi-Fi. There's a full coffee bar, healthy snacks and drinks. So non-playing adults are admitted for free and play passes are available for $7.50 for children younger than two and $15 per person for three and up. Birthday party packages also available for purchase. If you're wondering where Hang Indoor Playground is located, you can go to our website, but I'll, I'll tell you right now. It's 7403 Leslie Road. It is open seven days a week. Yes, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday, 9 to 9, Sunday, 9 to 8. Sounds, Sounds like, like a fun. great place to hang out, right? Check it out, everybody. Thanks for being with us. Have a great day.